Hey, and welcome to NASA Launchpad. I'm your host, Alicia Sears. Have you ever slept on memory foam? How about worn a pair of scratch-resistant lenses? Maybe you've watched satellite television. Well, if you have, then you've benefited from NASA-aided technology, more commonly known as spin-offs. When Congress created NASA in 1958, they had big visions for space. But Congress also mandated that the time and money being invested in space needed to come back to Earth in the form of practical benefits. So throughout its history, NASA has worked to transfer newly developed technologies to the public sector. These spin-offs are more common than you might realize. NASA spin-offs can actually be found in nearly every field of human endeavor, including energy, electronics, industry, medicine, nutrition, oceanography, safety, and even urban development. Here's astronaut Al Drew to talk a little bit more about spin-offs. When you have a difficult program, when you have to go solve problems you never saw before, you often create solutions to problems you didn't know you had. I think about Isaac Newton, who was trying to describe planetary motion back in the late 1600s, didn't have the math to do it, so he invented calculus. Okay, so we've had a few uses for calculus since then. Uh, a lot of the spin-offs we've got now because we're out there solving unique problems like trying to go to the moon, trying to build a space station, and we, so we go out and invent solutions to our problems and somebody looks at that going, boy, we could use that for something else. Um, that's the big beat of our space program. There's, there's, there's books and books of spin-off technologies, but they all have that kind of that same thing. The guy who, whoever you know, related, who invented that spin-off technology wasn't trying to build some new turbo pump for hearts or new fire extinguisher thing. They were trying to solve a particular problem. One of the most prolific programs for spin-off generation has been NASA's Space Shuttle. In its three decades of operation, the shuttle has produced over 130 different spin-offs that impact people's lives on Earth, including yours. Do you wear contact lenses or know someone who does? What you might not know is that astronauts on board the Space Shuttle performed experiments as part of a research project that led to better functioning contacts. Three experiments that flew on three separate shuttle missions resulted in contact lenses that are gas permeable, resistant to deposits, and less likely to harbor bacteria, leading the way for the next generation contact lenses we use every day. And get this, the technology that allows the Space Shuttle to autonomously dock with and serve its satellites resulted in a new tracking technology doctors today utilize in LASIK eye surgery. The eye tracking device is capable of sampling the eye's position at a rate of at least 1,000 times per second during the surgery. So thanks to the Space Shuttle spin-off, astigmatism correction has been significantly improved. Even as you watch this video, you're observing a Space Shuttle spin-off. In order to reduce the shakiness of shuttle launch videos, NASA engineers and scientists developed an enhanced video imaging and stabilization technology. The technology removes defects due to image jitter, image rotation, and image zoom. So your footage can go from this to this. Mechanisms on the space shuttle, like those used to lift the landing gear or move the wing flaps, are now found in museums or at amusement parks. Motion simulators use an adapted version of this space shuttle technology to reproduce the effects or feelings of being in a moving vehicle. It can also be used to enhance flight simulators giving pilots a much more realistic training experience. Space shuttle spin-offs aren't necessarily technologies. The spin-off may simply be an application of something learned as a result of the experiments done on the shuttle. That's the case with this next spin-off. Researchers studying the aerodynamics of the space shuttle applied what they learned to earthbound transportation. Using expertise gained from designing the space shuttle, engineers were able to alter the shape of large vehicles, like big rigs. Rounding corners and edges and adding fixtures known as fairings improve aerodynamic efficiency, which ultimately leads to improved gas mileage and better vehicle control. We can't even begin to tell you how many other experiments have provided those tangible benefits that Congress hoped to see when they created NASA. We can say the experiments on the shuttle have improved everything from ketchup to motor oil, have inspired exotic perfume scents because flowers develop unique aromas in space, and have even revealed the secrets of fire here on Earth. The payback has literally been astronomical. To be a great nation, you must do great things. And so if we want to continue to have a legacy of great things to reap from these things, we have to go out and, and do things that are tough, like going to Mars. I guarantee you, by the time we get to Mars, we'll have invented so many new technologies to get there and so transform how we live our lives that it, it would make it worth it. Whatever problems we need to solve to go to Mars, we'll find, um, we'll have applications here in society as well. And so. I think that's the bigger thing, is that you make yourself smarter and stronger by taking on these tough projects, and the spin-offs are kind of a serendipitous byproduct of it. Throughout the space shuttle era, NASA's fleet of shuttles has made over 20,000 orbits around Earth. The shuttles have carried crew and payloads, both large and small, into space. 
assembled, staffed, and maintained the International Space Station, carried satellites into orbit, and deployed in service the Hubble Space Telescope. All of these feats have led to the development of some amazing spin-off technologies that continue to impact our lives daily. Spin-offs from the shuttle just because it flew. See you next time on NASA Launchpad.